Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, as you've seen, um, you know, thanks for renaming yourself on Zoom. If you haven't done so, please take a moment to just add your first name and the country where you're dialing in from. Uh, we've got a great uh, group of people joining here on Zoom, as well as attending physically in one of our locations and also on YouTube uh, being live streamed. So it's great to be here with all of you. So uh, exciting to get started. Let's uh, go forward. So uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from uh, wherever you're joining us. Uh, we have participants from all over the world. Uh, we are your hosts today, Rahul, Colin, and Priyanshi. And as we go on, we will do quick introductions. But most importantly, we will cover four topics today. How does meditation help us to live in harmony? What is Himalayan Samarpan meditation? How to practice it? So we will do a short meditation today so you can actually get a taste of it. And how do we get started? We will also have time for Q&A at the end. But uh, if any questions come to your mind, please feel free to type them in Zoom chat. We have a couple of volunteers backstage who will gather all the questions together and we will take them up at the end. So uh, don't hold yourself back. If anything comes to your mind, uh, just make a note of it. So my name is Rahul Abhyankar. I'm based in Irvine, California. And I was introduced to Himalayan Samarpan meditation four years ago by my wife, Shilpa. She had been practicing for a couple of years before me. And seeing her experience, I was motivated to start as well. So as we go forward in the next one hour, I will share my experiences. Uh, very happy to be here with all of you and share my journey. So uh, let's take a quick pulse. What comes to your mind when you hear the phrase living in harmony? Uh, enter your responses in the Zoom chat. Let's see what, uh, what thoughts people have. Okay, peace, happiness, being in flow. That's interesting. Very nice. Great. So those are all the right things when we think about what harmony means. But there are a lot of factors that prevent us from living a life full of harmony. And you know, our thoughts, our mind, our body, our physical and mental well-being. Uh, sometimes, you know, we go through these conflicts. We experience emotional ups and downs, like we are on a roller coaster. We are anxious and worry about the future. We hold on to the past, you know, expectations that are not fulfilled, or frustration that something didn't happen the way we wanted. And so we find ourselves constantly reacting to what is going on and try to bring things in our control. Uh, well, you know, life is not all negative. We do experience joy and happiness, but we want the good times to last forever. And when there are dark clouds, we feel like they will never go away. And we feel very pessimistic. So that's how we are when we experience this emotional roller coaster and ups and downs. But on the other hand, when we are living in harmony, our state is very different, as some of you pointed out. We feel a sense of peace, peace and love within ourselves as well as in our relationships. And we feel the strength and confidence that no matter what comes in life, you know, we can handle it. We become more aware. We feel more connected with nature. We have positive feelings of compassion and gratitude. There's just a lot of, uh, you know, optimism. And as someone pointed out, we feel as if we are in flow. So meditation has a huge role in how we feel that balance and peace by impacting several aspects of our mind and our body's well-being. So let's see how that happens. So there is a lot of awareness about meditation and people are researching it and understanding it from various aspects. You know, psychologists and neuroscientists such as Dr. Davidson from University of Wisconsin, uh, they've done a lot of uh, research and come to the conclusion that our brain undergoes changes due to meditation. This is known as neuroplasticity. Uh, brain is like plastic, as the quote here goes. 
and it means that it can be molded and the pattern of brain activity can change just from meditation. And that's very powerful. If you see the diagram of brain activity on the right, the first figure is before meditation. The patterns in the right and left half of the brain are not synchronized. They are not in balance. And then you see the other two figures where the brain activity starts to synchronize during meditation. This phenomenon is known as whole brain synchronization or brain balance. And so that's how neuroscientists and uh, psychologists are looking at meditation and understanding its impact on the brain. You know, the medical community has also done many studies. The National Institute of Health has shared a lot of data on their website about how meditation has shown very positive effects on patients suffering from various physical and mental uh, illness, uh, diseases or illnesses. So if we are not feeling good physically and mentally, how can we experience harmony? So that's also good positive data coming out from the medical community. There is also a yogic view of meditation in terms of how it shifts the energy inside us. You know, the field of yoga is very vast and it is not limited only to the asanas or the postures that we do as part of yoga. Yoga overall is the science of understanding how energy or the life force moves within our body. This is called Kundalini energy. Some of you may have heard this term. So there are seven energy centers in our body and they are called as chakras. And each chakra governs different aspects of physical, social, and emotional health. When these chakras are weak or they don't have enough strength, then the energy flow is not continuous and that's what creates imbalance and disease. With meditation, the energy in our body starts to flow upwards from the root chakra at the base of the spine and it starts going upwards, clearing the other chakras all the way up to the crown chakra, which is our connection to universal consciousness. The crown chakra is at the top of our head. Now, not all meditation practices reach up to the crown chakra. And this is where it's the pinnacle of the spiritual journey or self-realization and enlightenment. Now, let's understand with one example how imbalance in the chakras can affect us, can affect our ability to live in harmony. You know, the third chakra from the bottom that is the solar plexus chakra, or in Sanskrit, it is called as Manipura chakra. It is located around the navel area. When this chakra is open and healthy, we feel a lot of confidence. We have a strong sense of purpose. We feel self-motivation, satisfaction, contentment. On the other hand, when this chakra is in imbalance or it is weak, we suffer from low self-esteem, may have anger or control issues, and have difficulty making decisions. So the fire element is the main element of the solar plexus, and it is meant to ignite our inner fire and also strengthen our digestive fire. Because of the location of this chakra being in the navel region, it is also connected to the digestive system and metabolism. So this is just to give you one example of how chakras affect our physical, emotional, well-being. And again, the topic of chakras is vast and the science in and of itself. So just wanted to share this view of uh, meditation from the yogic standpoint. There is also a, a societal view uh, useful to understand how we as humans, as individuals and society have evolved over time. What is it that has given us empowerment and strength? So in the very old days, you know, empowerment was related to where we were born. So if you were born in a royal family, you felt more empowered over, over others. If the size of your army was bigger than the other king or queen, again, it was a source of power. But this empowerment was only for a few people, the few monarchs, the few kings and queens that existed at that time. Over time, people felt empowered based on their physical strength and what they could do as a result. Strengthening the body was an important aspect of this. And you know, the Romans and Greeks, they emphasized physical fitness and they created a lot of these bodybuilding exercises. Now, many people, those who could build their physical strength, 
could feel empowered by it. So it was not just restricted to kings and queens and based upon status. It was based upon what we could do as a result of our physical strength. Now, in modern times, uh, people feel empowered based upon their intellect, their creativity, their IQ and brain power. And we know many famous examples. There are lots of entrepreneurs who have created wealth for themselves and for others. And so that's lots of people as compared to kings and queens and bodybuilders, but still not every single person in the world. And as our world and society moves forward, we are in a phase right now where our empowerment and strength really comes from our emotional and spiritual strength, the strength of our mind, of our soul. And this is possible for everybody, each and every one of us. Each one of us can build the strength. So collectively as individuals, as a family, as a community, and as a society, we become stronger. And this is the vision of Himalayan Samarpan meditation. There's a lot of awareness from meditation. It has increased because celebrities are practicing meditation. They're talking about how it is helping them. Uh, you see this quote from LeBron James of the LA Lakers and how it helps him to center himself, listen to his inner self. And these words, the inner self, this is really important. The inner self, the inner wisdom, building awareness to it and realizing that wisdom, that's an important aspect of our spiritual journey and meditation. You know, many companies are promoting these practices among their employees. Once we make a commitment to our own well-being and productivity, then we can find the time to do what is important and necessary for us. You know, when I started doing Samarpan meditation, this was before COVID. I had a one-hour commute each way to work and a lot of travel. And so I experimented with my routine and made sure that I was able to practice it either in the morning before I left for work or later in the day at any time. So that commitment is very important. Uh, there's some interesting data about meditation. You know, it's not something just limited to a few people that are trying to practice this. You know, Pew Research surveyed people across the United States to understand how frequently people meditate. And it is interesting to see that 40% of them said that they meditate at least once a week. So that's extremely encouraging. And these are people across many different religions. Clearly, they see meditation as a universal practice and not just as a religious practice. In fact, it's not a religious practice at all. And people practice meditation regardless of which race they are. Also, age groups. Most of them are between 30 to 49 years. But it's nice to see that even younger people between 16 to 29 years old are also practicing meditation. Clearly, they see meditation as something that they can benefit from today instead of doing it in later years, instead of putting it off. So anyone can meditate, everyone should meditate. And Bill Gates puts it very nicely. He sees it as meditation as an exercise for the mind, nothing to do with faith or mysticism. Uh, clearly people of many faiths and beliefs are practicing meditation. As Bill Gates says, it, pays, it helps him pay attention to his thoughts, separate himself from his thoughts, now, when we say anyone can meditate and everyone should meditate, then I'm sure you're asking, but which meditation practice to adopt? Uh, you hear about so many of them. And, you know, over the past 10 years, I have learned, uh, my wife Shilpa and I, both of us have learned and tried a few meditation practices. Uh, there are so many ancient practices that take you inward on the spiritual journey. You may have heard about some of them. Uh, there are some newer adaptations which address specific symptoms. For example, you may have heard about MBSR or mindfulness-based stress reduction. So there are a few things to consider. The most important is you should be able to incorporate it in your daily routine easily. It's like you know practicing any skill where repetition is very important. If we cannot easily make it part of our lifestyle, then our practice won't be consistent and it will not get strengthened. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, my wife started doing Samarpan meditation before me. And at that time, the reason I was not too keen to get started is, you know, I thought this will be yet another meditation practice that I would not be able to keep going. And I've gone on retreats, spending time away from family and work to learn 
some meditation practices, you know, but somehow I was not able to make it stick. And it was just about me, you know, I was not able to make it stick. So the other aspect is to identify a practice that helps you go deeper. At a physical level, every practice feels very similar. We are taking the time to sit with ourselves, observing our thoughts. However, it is important to see how we can go deeper. And as LeBron James said, how we can connect with that inner self and go beyond this physical aspect. So why Samarpan meditation? Why did it appeal to me and to many others around the world? Well, one, it is simple to follow. I did not have to go out of town or to any retreat to learn. So it was easily accessible. You know, nowadays when meditation retreats have become a business, Samarpan meditation is taught for free all over the world to anybody who wants to learn. There are no rules, no do's and don'ts, no sequence of breath-related exercises to remember or do. As a result, it was also simple to adopt. The other thing is that the principle of Samarpan, that it is based on connecting with the soul, that really resonated with me. So let me share a little story. When I started with Samarpan meditation, the pandemic had just started. And like everyone, I was working from home. And, you know, I had terrible eating habits. I, I love to snack on all the Indian snacks. So when I was at home, food was also easily available and within reach. But, you know, this concept that I am a soul made me more aware of how I was eating for just pleasure and not because I was really hungry. And that created a, a big shift inside me. In the first year that I was doing meditation every day, you know, 30 minutes every day, I lost 30 pounds. And, you know, this was in the pandemic when gyms were closed. I was doing two things consistently. Uh, one was walk for 45 minutes, and the second was meditate for 30 minutes every day. Now, I didn't give up carbs, or I didn't give up sugar, or change my diet in any way. I only added those 30 minutes of meditation, but the teaching and the awareness that I am a soul and not just my body. And that experience was my validation that this was working for me, both inside and outside on many levels. You know, people also noticed and said that, you know, I'm a better listener, that they felt when they were speaking to me that I was giving them their full attention. This was all new to me and had never happened before. So that was my personal experience. And, you know, many people have had their own personal experiences as well. But this, this was very important for me. You know, Samarpan meditation, as we talked about, moves the Kundalini energy right up to the crown chakra and connects with universal consciousness. So not all meditation practices uh, go that deep and shift energy across all chakras. So I was you know, able to understand how that became effective in my case, right? Uh, sustaining the practice consistently was also important, as I mentioned before. You know, when I followed other meditation practices before, I was doing it all alone. And it felt that I was you know, sitting at the bottom of this tall building, taking one laborious step at a time, going up this building. On the other hand, with Samarpan meditation, because of the collective meditations with other practitioners and knowing that there was a community all around the world, you know, I felt supported in making it consistent and keeping it going. It was like going up the tall building in an elevator together, and you're not doing it all alone. You know, if any of you are into running, you will relate to this. It is very hard to train for a half marathon all by yourself. But if you're training with a group of people, you have a coach and you have your friends that you're running with, then it feels much easier. It feels nice to keep going and nice to keep supporting each other. You know, it's like that. So that collectivity was important to sustain the practice for me and many others. So... Let's learn more about the origins of Himalayan Samarpan meditation and also how to practice it. For that, I'd like to invite Colin Harris, who's a longtime practitioner. Uh, welcome, Colin, and over to you. Thank you so much for that beautiful description. Um, you did such a good job. Hi, everybody. I'm Colin. Uh, I'm from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I've been practicing uh, Samarpan meditation for the last eight years. Um, I'm just a regular guy, uh, I'm an automotive technician, you know, and I can say that this 
meditation practice has truly changed my life. Uh, it has allowed me to become such a more soulful person. And I'm so happy to get to share some information with you today. So the first thing is the origin of Himalayan Samarpan meditation. So this is actually a practice that's 800 years old. And it was maintained in the Himalayas. It wasn't available to the public. You know, for the last 800 years, it was passed down from one person to another person or one person to just two people. And the only way to get this information and this energy was to walk around the Himalayas and hopefully you run into a guru. But they decided to find a medium to bring this information to society. Uh, they had, there was a collective goal of creating harmony within the world by creating harmony in each individual person. We're so honored in this time, in this place, to get this information so readily. We don't have to walk around the Himalayas, you know, freezing and being hungry. Uh, we just have to listen and just sit down and meditate. And so I'm so grateful that we get that opportunity. So who is this medium? His Holiness Sri Shiv Krupana de Swami. Now, what's interesting about him is he's just a simple householder. He had a family. He worked in business. But he had this deep spiritual desire from a young age for spiritual truth. And he was called to go into the Himalayas and meet with all these different gurus and to become self-realized. But the difference with him was he was meant to be sent back into society versus most, most gurus uh, in the Himalayas, once they go and they start meditating, they stay. And this is very unique. And they picked him for a very specific reason, is that he is just a normal person with a family uh, and he had a job. And he really took this and went, took the call. And he, you know, wandered around the Himalayas. Uh, his story is very, very uh, amazing. And he has this vision of just one world family and for everybody to become their own guru. Uh, and I'm so grateful that he he did all the hard work for us. Uh, I am truly, truly grateful. Uh, I can't imagine what his life has been like, whereas I just have to sit in my in my room and meditate. Um, and it, it's truly... I really want to emphasize this of how special it is that we get this energy without doing a lot of work. So what does Samarpan mean? What does Samarpan mean? Well, Samarpan means to submit. And then you might be thinking, oh my God, what does that mean? Well, submitting is letting go of ego, expectation, attachment, the thoughts of the past and the future the negativity, the problems. When when we sit down to meditate, our mind is filled. All, a lot of our problems in society today are all related to the mind, right? We're thinking about the future. Oh, what's going to happen? Is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? There's a million futures. Or we're thinking about the past. Oh, that person did me wrong. Um, oh, I want to go back and experience it. Like maybe you remember a time in your life where you were really happy and you're like, oh, well, I just want to get back to there. When really... What Samarpan is doing is when you submit, you're submitting to the now. You're submitting to a moment. Um, and this becoming in the moment and letting go of your egos and expectations and your attachments to the future, you start to get peace and this calm. And it slowly infiltrates your life when you live life, not looking to the future and not looking to the past, uh, letting go of expectations. So this one right here, Spirit of Samarpan, you might be looking at these two pictures and wondering, well, what's the difference? You know, it looks like there's both children. 
Well, the big difference here is what the child is actually doing. So on the left, we have the monkey. And the little baby monkey is actually holding on, right? It's holding on to mom. And the act of holding on is effort. Versus if we look at the cat, the child has to do nothing. The mom just picks it up, just the baby is just submitting to the mother. And this is like Samarpan. You don't have to do anything. The only thing you're doing is just sitting and meditating and letting the energy guide you where it needs to be. It's There's not an effort. The only effort is just to submit and to sit. Um, who is a guru? Now, this is actually something that I, when I first started, I struggled. I didn't understand this. The actual meaning of a guru is someone who takes us from darkness to light. But when I really went into what is a guru, it is a teacher. It's somebody who's here to teach us and helps us learn a skill and practice. And it is we're learning from somebody who has mastered that skill. Now, in North America, we would probably call this a mentor, a mentor or a, a just a teacher. But that word mentor and teacher, it feels different to us, but that is what a guru is. You know, it is somebody who has a skill and wants to pass that skill on to us. And when I personally reframed that in my own mind, having just lived in North America, it really put me at ease to accept Swamiji as just a teacher. And when we think of a teacher, this also lets us you can be from any religion, right? Because what Swamiji is teaching us is just meditation, just connecting to our soul. So it allows us to still practice whatever religion or faith you're still doing, and you're just learning meditation as a skill. And it's a skill that deepens your connection into whatever you believe in. He wants us to become our own guru. That's another really unique thing. I notice online, there's a lot of teachers and gurus and they want you to pay money and they want you to keep coming back. They want you to be the monkey, right? Where you're attached to them, where Swamiji doesn't want that at all. Swamiji wants you to get self-realized so that you can go into the world and be your own. All right, so we're gonna practice here. We are going to practice uh, meditation as a group. Before we do that, though, I just want everybody to quickly ask themselves, how are you feeling right now? And there is a point to this, but how are you feeling right now? And just pay attention to how you're feeling right now. You're more than welcome to uh, just put how you're feeling in the chat. And the reason we're doing this is because meditation and is a lot about experience, noticing the little subtle changes. And a lot of times it's very subtle. So I really want you to pay attention to how you're feeling right now. Maybe it's anxious, maybe you're calm. Whatever it is, is okay. Curious, anxious, these are all really good things. So the meditation itself, there is a chant, and the chant is very simple. I'm a holy soul. I'm a pure soul. Now, we could blow past this, but the genius part of I'm a holy soul, I'm a pure soul, this itself is helping you feed your soul. We have this mind-body-soul connection, and we spend so much time in society feeding our mind, learning knowledge. We spend a lot of time on our bodies, eating right, going to the gym. But how much time do we really spend feeding our soul, connecting to our soul? And with this very simple chant, you're connecting to your soul. You're realizing that your soul is holy and pure. And the other benefit is, is you're actually connecting to all the people in the world that are chanting, I'm a holy soul, I'm a pure soul, and meditating. And this actually helps you 
get into meditation. So it might sound like a very simple little chant, and it is. But behind it is so much energy, 800 years of meditation coming to help you connect to your soul. Now, we're going to quickly go over how to practice Amarpan meditation. So the first thing is, is either sit comfortably on the ground, or if you're sitting on a chair, touch your bare feet to the ground and really feeling your like sit bones in the chair. And then we're going to chant, I'm a holy soul, I'm a pure soul. I'm a holy soul, I'm a pure soul. I'm a holy soul, I'm a pure soul. And if you ever forget which order they're in, HP sauce, that's how I remember it. The next thing you're going to do is we're going to all take our hand and we're going to place it on the top of our crown and we're going to rotate clockwise three times. And then when you take your palm down, you notice how you have that spot on the head. What this does is it helps you connect to that spot. In Samarpan meditation, after we say the chant and we're sitting, we focus on the crown chakra. And this goes back to the chakras and helping bringing that kundalini energy from the root to the crown. You'd require no other thoughts. Now, your mind will wander. You will get itchy. You will, your body is going to try to distract you. And then the next thing is your mind's going to try to distract you. All of that is okay. Do you just surrender that? And anytime you realize you're not thinking about the crown, you just come back to the crown. And over time of you practicing this, it'll become easier and easier. And you're actually going to increase the distance between your thoughts. And then the next thing is just, you just got to sit still for 30 minutes. Surrender your expectations and observe your thoughts, sensations, and feelings. Um, I actually struggled with one of these a lot when I first started meditating. Because I had, the first 10 times I meditated, I had these unbelievable experiences. And then they stopped. And I started to judge myself. I started to want something. But I realized you have to let that go. You have to surrender. So it is just about sitting for 30 minutes with no expectations. Sometimes maybe something will happen, sometimes not. And focusing on the crown of your head. All right. So we're going to meditate for 15 minutes together. Now, I know we said normally 30, but during this program, we're just going to meditate for just a short 15 minutes. And it might seem like a long time and it might seem like a short time, but just sit 30 minutes. I mean, 15 minutes. I'm just going to play that. मैं एक पवित्र आत्मा हूँ. मैं एक शुद्ध आत्मा हूँ. मैं एक पवित्र आत्मा हूँ मैं एक शुद्ध आत्मा हूँ मैं एक पवित्र आत्मा हूँ मैं एक शुद्ध आत्मा हूँ I am a pure soul. I am a holy soul. I am a pure soul. I am a holy soul. I am a pure soul.
अब हम परमात्मा को प्रार्थना करेंगे हे परमात्मा कृपया मुझे आत्म साक्षात्कार प्रदान करो हे परमात्मा कृपया मुझे आत्म साक्षात्कार प्रदान करो हे परमात्मा कृपया मुझे आत्म साक्षात्कार प्रदान करो Now we will pray to Paramatma. O Paramatma, please have the grace to give me self-realization. O Paramatma, please have the grace to give me self-realization. O Paramatma, please have the grace to give me self-realization.
almighty we pure souls pray from our hearts that let peace prevail in the whole world let all souls of the world achieve spiritual and all round progress Wow. So what was your experience? How are you feeling? Meditation is a lot about experience. So you can put that in the chat. And while you guys are just giving you a second to do that, it's normal if sitting for 15 minutes is really hard, right? And maybe that was your experience. Maybe it was really easy. Whatever your experience is, is valid and okay. Oh, very calm in the zone. Yes, very good. Yes, that's how I feel too. I feel very, 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 very calm and very peaceful. Mm. Relaxing. These are really good words. So what is an aura? It is a bioelectromagnetic field that's all around us. And it is a reflection of what's inside. It's this beautiful protective field, this bubble. And what's really cool is it's actually captured by a camera, acrylic photography. And these are all over the world. I've had mine taken a picture of, and we're going to see in a second what Swami's is. But I want to go into a little bit more of what the aura is or how I perceive the aura. So the first thing is, is the aura is a reflection of our inner world, of our chakras. So as we strengthen our chakras by meditating, that energy comes out and forms a bubble around us. Now, I had an experience. I went all the way to India for an international retreat. And I'll never forget uh, coming back. And, you know, they talk about a protective bubble. But I remember walking through the mall. And I'm a very sensitive person. I actually don't like going to malls and things like that. And as I was walking through the mall, it felt like nothing could get at me. It's like I just had this solid bubble around me. And I wasn't feeling everybody like I normally was. Another way to look at the aura is if you think of, I'm like, why should you meditate? Why should you make your aura stronger? It gets more dense. So what I think of is... If you take a rock and there's a pool of water, or let's say there's no pool, it's just air and you drop the rock, right? It goes all the way to the bottom of the pool. Now you fill that pool with water. You've been meditating for a while. Now you drop that rock and it goes a little slower. There's a little more resistance. Now, what if you were to fill that pool with some you know, gel and now you drop the rock, maybe it goes in just a little bit. That is how by you meditating, by you working on your inner world, you start to form this beautiful bubble around you. And you might be able to feel this even now when you meet certain people, their aura, there's just something about them. And you can pay attention to that. Now here's Swami Ji's aura. Now his aura has changed and this is really special because all these pictures are after he left the Himalayas. And the point I really want to make with all of these pictures is, is that Swami G achieved spiritual growth, even himself, by even living in society. Now, this is amazing because this shows us that we can do it too. Swami G just meditates 30 minutes a day, right? So we can do this too. Our aura can change and become stronger over time the more we meditate. Now, Swami Ji has a pure wish. And this is something that really drew me to him. He wants to help people progress spiritually. He wants everyone to become their own guru. Now, these two things I mentioned before that I noticed other gurus 
and other spiritual teachers aren't doing. They want to charge money. They want you to keep coming back to them. But Swamiji, that, that, he has such a pure wish, right? He just wants you to progress spiritually. And, I, you know, if he lights your torch and you go off on your own, you know, his work is done. And then world peace through inner harmony. The thing about everybody talks about peace, world peace, world peace, world peace. Well, how do you achieve world peace? Well, the only way to achieve world peace is to change every single person on the planet, to get people in touch with the soul. Because once you're in touch with your soul, becoming bad things becomes hard. Lying becomes hard. I've experienced this, right? And the other pure wish is a universal family. And that's something that Samarpan, I really, really, truly feel is this universal family. So the global collectivity and recognition. Now, I want to spend a second here and just say that the global collectivity is something that is awe-inspiring to me and that is something that has grown in a very short time to the entire world. And I'm going to give you an example of just the people that are in Samarpan. I mean, you've met a couple of us now, but I remember when I went to India for the first time and I was so scared and nervous and I didn't know what to expect. And I met this man, Vishal. And he walked up to me and he was glowing. His aura was glowing. And he just came up to me with so much love. And what's cool is the more people I met, the more people I was like, wow, all these people, they're just like exuding this certain love. What are they doing? Well, they're just meditating. And the other benefit about the collectivity is, I know for me, when I first started meditating, meditation by myself was so difficult. But the collectivity, when you meditate in a collective, it helps you. It helps you bring you up. It helps you meditate easier. So, you know, and there's meditations every day, multiple times a day that you can join and meditate with the global family. So what's next? I'm going to introduce you to Pri and I'm going to let her take over from here. And I thank you guys all for your time today. Hello guys. Uh, my name is Priyanshi and I live in Houston, Texas. Um, I've been meditating um, for approximately five-ish years and I was introduced by my mom. Um, and currently I'm a college student at UT Austin studying public health. And I would love to share with you guys what comes next. So there are three steps that we would say approximately that we would like to incorporate in our life to further grow spiritually with meditation. And obviously the first one is explore. Um, thanks to Rahul and um, Colin, we were able to understand um, why meditation is important, why Himalayan Samarpan meditation and how to practice it. So how do we go forward? So our next step is experimentation. And as said earlier, starting new things can be overwhelming, especially with all the new information and everything. We get caught up in perfection paralysis where we don't want to start something because we don't know where to begin. And that's such a normal feeling because honestly, we've all felt it. I know I felt it. And the best way to go about it is experimentation. And let me preface this by saying that when we're starting something new, especially meditation, what happens is we like our body comes in the way, our like our mind comes in the way. And what I mean by that is when you're sitting to meditate in the beginning, it's obviously really hard. It's not an easy thing. And it's a very like slow, amazing process. And what happens is our body maybe will like be itchy or your foot will hurt or um, things like that to distract you, or you'll get thoughts about, or you'll be like, oh, I have to do this later on today. Or you'll just get thoughts. And these are all things that are kind of like, little like things that will happen throughout your time of meditating but 
we can totally get past that. Like when we get thoughts, it's important that we observe our thoughts and not get in the realm of thinking of like more and more. And also it's important not to fight our thoughts, right? It's important to not be like, oh, I shouldn't be thinking right now. Um, I can't be thinking or I should be meditating and things like that because it'll come with ease. So therefore, um, another really big, um, step is that a lot of us look at science to understand things right a lot of things like from like the older dates to now is based off of science and like logistics and as human beings we are like rational and we like are like logical and we like to know like the practicality behind all of the things that we start or we do and this sometimes becomes like a roadblock for us to trust something or have faith in something since we've like not experienced it ourselves, but since science is an experimentation in itself, it's really important that you also experiment this. It's not essential for you to have like a blind faith. It's not essential for you to be like, oh, I have to trust in this. I have to do it. I have to like um, accept everything that's going on because you don't, because you can obviously experiment it for yourself and incorporate how much ever you want based off of your own experimentation and your own discoveries and it's important that you draw your own conclusions ultimately so it's important to have an open mind and it's open it's like an amazing thing to just give this a try and that way we can kind of experiment something and incorporate it into our lives um and obviously as anything else like even going to the gym working out eating healthy all of these things is a habit right it's like a new thing we're incorporating into our life and we need to be a habit so every habit takes time to stick which is very very normal so we need to give this at least 45 days and actually a fun fact for you is that if you give 30 minutes each day for the for 45 days, you will have invested only 22 and a half hours, which is less than a day. So if you've 30 minutes, if you give 30 minutes of your day every single day, you'll literally only have incorporated less than a day, which is basically nothing, right? And I truly feel that if you do this, you'll have your own experiences and these will help you validate and guide you forward on this path of peace and harmony. And now we have done so many workshops like this one and we've gotten some feedback from people and people have said to us that um, they wanted to like get help starting and um, because like we tend to face so many hurdles along the way and it's important to um, have someone holding our hand because it just is better and easier that way um, and some hurdles are like whether like you like finding time in a day and dealing with resistance on our body like talked about before or handling the thoughts and emotions in our mind and it's important that we have someone with us to help us how to like get rid of these hurdles and focus on the bigger picture so we actually have um been through similar situations and wish that everyone can benefit from what we've gained and so Hence, with that pure wish, um, we've created an immersion program to handhold and support new people. Um, it is so, so, so essential that you join this free 45-day immersion group. Um, basically, this immersion group is a program to support new meditators for 45 days. And it is designed to help ease into the routine of meditating regularly. Like I said before, it's hard to incorporate this into our lives because we were so busy, like um, people like your parents, like your children, work, school. There's so many things that like take over our lives every day. And it's important that we take out 30 minutes for self-care and spiritual progress and there are four main parts to the immersion program. So the first is we have this WhatsApp group. Um, the group is specifically dedicated to the immersion participants. So um, we will share one to two posts daily, like questions and answers and like meditation reminders. That way it's like, like basically on your phone, it's like a reminder to like help you um, not forget. And there are no forwards or promotion in this group. So it's a very, very, very like calm group. It's not like bombarding with any messages or anything like that. And it basically provides a platform for discussion and support. And um, we meet over Zoom on the weekends where we meditate together, share some valuable resources and talk about experiences and also address questions that you have. 
um, for this round, our first meeting will be happening on Sunday, February 25th. And we provide a go-to contact if you wish to reach out to someone at any time of day. It's just a one-on-one -on -one private conversation. If you have any personal questions that you don't want to ask in the group, that's completely valid and normal. Um, you have we have this like where you can contact the person, ask the questions that you have, and we even can connect you to someone more local if you would like to um, have it that way. Um, finally, we will be sharing resources on topics such as auras, like chakras, and other important factors and topics that will help you ease into meditation and understand the depth of it. Um, you can listen to them at any time at your own pace. There's no time frame or anything like that. And in the past, people have appreciated this program so, so, so much. We've gotten such amazing feedback from people. And therefore, I feel like it's so important that you guys go ahead and join the group so that we can get to know you and we can help you through this process. Um, the WhatsApp group has been specifically created for participants of this workshop and a few of us volunteers, like mentioned before. And um, let us take a moment right now, if you haven't already, to scan the code and join the group so we can continue to build on what we have started today. Um, some of you may have already joined from the email that was sent to you guys earlier. And um, if you haven't, then no worries at all. There is no better time than now to join a supportive collectivity. And like mentioned before, collectivity, the reason why being in this immersion program is such a crucial part is because it truly, 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 I cannot stress this enough, helps so much when you have a whole group with you because that helps you and allows you to feel and be, your feelings be validated by other people because I promise you what you're feeling, I'm sure there's other people that feel the same way and it's nice to know that you have someone that feels the same as you. And therefore, um, we have some positive testimonies that were given by um, past participants um, and on the screen above and people have said that this group this help is very helpful and effective for everyone and um, people who are beginners obviously loved this and um, the group is also like I said for you to ask questions um, there are also daily collective meditation reminders with the timings and zoom link to join I know Colin mentioned earlier that we have a lot of online zoom meditations on different times and um, that's the our daily collective zoom meeting um, there's no conversation at all it's just basically you go and the volunteers have the meditation track playing and we all meditate together in collectivity and then when the track gets it's over the meeting's over so it's a very quick 30 minutes kind of. Um, again, the program is 100% free, which is such an amazing benefit. Um, the volunteers are here to support in all possible ways, like mentioned, because this is our passion and we love to help you just like we were helped. And um, we believe that world peace starts with inner peace and one soul at a time. Um, we welcome you on this journey of living in harmony with the Himalayan Therapone Meditation. And um, I will go ahead and um, have, we have some common questions. I'm sure there are questions that um, you may have be having, or these are the questions that we have been asked in the past. Um, our very first question is, is Himalayan Thimberman meditation about Hinduism? And the really, really, really simplistic answer to this is no, not at all. Um, Himalayan Thimberman meditation is spiritual education, and you will understand your own religion and culture better. People, we have people of all religions um, meditating and doesn't have anything to do directly with, with um, religion. It's more so like what we believe is humanity is the true religion. And um, it's practiced regardless of nationality, gender, um, lifestyle, or any other preferences. Um, and like I said before, it's based on the fact that humanity is a true religion and the world is one family. And so there's no um, religion borders to this at all. Um, another question we have is, I want to meditate, but is it mandatory to accept a guru? And like we mentioned before in this practice, nothing is mandatory except practicing meditation regularly. Um, and focus on the meditation part first, because like I said before, with all of the other information about like the chakras, auras, and things, um, it'll help you get your feet wet and it will help you understand 
how um, you want to incorporate this and how you want to go about it in your life. And um, like we mentioned before as well, um, a guru is just a master or expert teacher that helps us learn a skill. And um, he's obviously gone through um, Sri Sri Krupan and Swami. He has gone through all of these hurdles and he's here to give us this information at ease. And um, meditation is a skill taught by spiritual like master, like, like I said, and he's just sharing his knowledge and wisdom through his teachings. Um, and truly Himalayan Thermal Meditation believes that the ultimate stage is to become your own guru. So no, it is not necessary to accept a guru at all. Um, our next question is, I already have a guru. Do I have to accept a new guru? And um, I think ultimately the question leads back to focus um, on the practice of meditation first. And accepting someone as a guru is a personal choice um, validated through personal experiences. And that takes time and faith. And we totally understand that. Um, we welcome you to see Sri Sri Krupan and Swami as a medium, um, like many other spiritual masters, just the medium that is helping us and is holding our hand to take us through our spiritual journey. Um, we understand that the pure wisdom and experience the flow of subtle energy without getting attached to a physical person. So that is the answer to that question. And um, our next question is, do I have to give up alcohol or become vegetarian? And again, the answer is no. You do not have to change any aspect of your lifestyle at all. And you're not required to give anything up. Um, just add 30 minutes to your daily routine. And that's all we ask. Um, your lifestyle will continue to progress through inner guidance over time without any rules from the outside so you don't have to do anything that is like against your will um and like 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 giving up like eating meat or um becoming a vegetarian like I said or becoming vegan or like not like going like alcohol or like going out or anything like that there's no there's no 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 restrictions at all with this um, the next question we had is, do I have to stop my current meditation practice? And all meditation practices bring us on a path of spiritual progress towards self-realization and peace, which is like the ultimate goal for basically all meditation practices. And many of us have explored several meditation practices in the past, and that's totally fine. Um, we welcome you to experiment and experience with Himalayan Therapy Meditation and its teachings of surrendering expectations, ego, and attachment. And after 45 days, if you like it, then you can continue and um, grow on this. And like we said before, your personal experiences is the best teacher for you. Um, so if we have any questions from today, we can go ahead and answer those right now. Yeah, I can read that, Bri. I'll just yeah. read out the question. Hi, my name is Sherpa, and I'm just going to facilitate the Q&As that have come. Uh, so we have a very practical, helpful question here. Thank you for taking the time to initiate this event. I've been practicing meditation mindfulness activity for almost three years, but the struggle that I encountered was the ability to experience the same peace and harmony that I get when I'm alone and sitting in a calm place. I wish I could be able to achieve the same feeling of peace and harmony when my child and I are having an argument or he or she is not listening or pressure at work. How do you remain calm even when the situation is not perfect for calmness? By Raji Ravichandran. So I can absolutely relate to this question, Raji. And thank you for asking this. Um, Rahul, do you want to take this one? Yeah, certainly. So Raji, once again, thanks for sharing your thoughts candidly. And um, again, I would welcome you to join the immersion program. Uh, give this practice a try, see how it helps you become more consistent with meditation. And all of us, you know, ultimately want to be the person, uh, you know, we want to be in different situations, uh, as you said, you know, with kids, pressure at work, we want to start responding to every situation instead of reacting to it in the moment right and that uh you know ability to separate ourselves from that situation or separate ourselves from those thoughts 
and gather and collect ourselves in that moment is so important. And that awareness and ability to separate ourselves is something, you know, that skill we build through the practice of meditation being consistent and regular. So I hope you'll be able to join us and, and do that. Yeah, Raji, hope that helps. I mean, just to add to it, I guess it is related to what we talked about. As we start realizing that we are a soul and even other people, including our kids, are a soul, they have their own journey. We start to connect. Our relationships start to change in a slightly different way. It happens slowly and gradually. And this is my personal experience as a mom as well that when everything that they would do, we attach it so much to, you know, oh, my child is doing this or not doing this. When is she going to learn? When is he going to do this right? And so on. But we are able to, over time with our soul consciousness growing, we are able to create that distance of reaction and response. And that relationship starts to change. We start to let go our effort in trying to make everything go our way and we are able to accept better the situations that come. And that ability to accept brings that peace and calmness in the moment, not just while meditating, but even in the moment. So this is something that will happen over time and something for you to experience as you start, you know, build building that soul consciousness. So the next question, hope that answers your question, Raji, feel free to comment uh, if there's any more. But then we have the next question, is, is there a recommended app for guidance? So I can go ahead and answer this question. Yeah, there you go. Um, there, there are so, I know there are so many like apps out there that um, help with like, my, like mindfulness and like meditation and all those things. Um, I think the best way for um, like take the immersion program kind of as like an app. Um, it is basically kind of like the same thing where we have like the guided meditations. Um, we have the meditation reminders. Um, we have like the like depths of like meditation and like why we're doing it and like how kind of it relates to our life and connects us to like other things. And so um, I think the immersion program um, kind of like could be considered um, an app. And if you want like more information, if that's exactly what um, is like, like looking, if you're looking for, um, like if you want like kind of like background and stuff, we have like a website um, that you can go ahead and um, like get, go to like kind of get like the feel of it and like read more. Cause I know I also like connect more to like reading and like, like kind of like the guidance and all that. And um, for sure, for sure, for sure, join um, our immersion program. And we would love to see you there. Yeah, I'll, I'll just quickly add on to that um, in terms of apps. You know, there are a number of very popular apps for mindfulness, like, you know, five minute mindfulness or things like that. I think those are good sort of apps if you are in a hurry and you want to really uh, you know, get that mindfulness in some very uh, busy situation. But when we think about meditation, uh, you want to be able to build that practice and give it the amount of time that it needs on a consistent daily basis, right? There are apps for doing yoga, for example, right? But you have to have that right frame of time and space to be able to do that, right? So uh, all those apps, I and mean, I've tried some of those apps as well, um, but uh, just to keep that perspective and, uh, you know, we have YouTube tracks that are for meditation uh, that can, you know, different types of tracks uh, as well. Next question is, what are traumas and how does it relate to our life? How does this meditation help with that? Yeah, I think that's a very interesting question. Colin, did you want to uh, take that? Yeah, I would love. Oh, I would love to take that one. Um, so trauma, uh, I've spent a lot of time on this actually. Trauma is in our life; things happen to us, and then we make a story up in our mind. But how does meditation help that? Um, I can just tell you my experience. My experience of Samarpan meditation is processing through meditation. I remember there was times where I would meditate 
And I would cry and cry and cry after meditation. I didn't know why. As you work through your chakras and you start building up that strength, they will naturally fall away. You don't have to necessarily focus on them. Just the act of meditating will clear that stuff. And how it impacts your life is we are operating of the subconscious mind all the time in through life, every interaction. But as we get in touch with our soul, the interactions just slowly start changing. We don't have those triggers. If somebody's in trauma, you'll see it, you know, maybe somebody just says something very simple and you have a big reaction like this, like, ah, right. As you meditate, those reactions get less and less and less. And then one day, you have peace um, and it is truly calming. But just the act of meditation is all you have to do, in my opinion, in my experience. I hope that answered your question. Thanks for answering that, uh, Colin. It helped me also uh, personally. So I'll go on to the next question. What time is this daily meditation if I join the 45-day program? Let me answer that. Um, actually, that so uh, as we talked about Himalayan Samatran meditation has a lot of importance on collectivity. So there are actually many different times of the days that uh, collective meditations happen for different time zones. And we communicate that detail in the immersion program. And what we do is there, there is a very common time across all time zones for which we also send a daily reminder. So those who are, uh, and that common time is actually 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. Central, um, and then uh, uh, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific. So that you get the daily reminder for but you will also get the links and information for all other timings in case this timing doesn't suit you, then there are other options as well. And then there are other, uh, you know, e even on the weekend. So basically uh, many different timings where daily meditations can happen and you can uh, chime in and the common one you will get the reminder for during these 45 days program. And that reminder is also for, it is possible that maybe initially not all times work out for you. And so it's also a reminder that you can sit and meditate anytime that 30 minutes you want, and then figure out at least once a week to join collectivity in one of these times, or especially the Sunday meetings that are highly focused on the um, immersion participants, where primarily the immersion participants meet on Sundays. Uh, and that would be the 8 a.m. Pacific and uh, 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern time on Sunday mornings. So you can join that on a weekly basis as well. So that's that question. Will there be any sessions during 45 days to discuss the challenges we beginners face? Of course, that's the Sunday meeting that we talk about. Uh, in the Sunday meeting, we play short discourse to get our energy and, you know, knowledge going related to, uh, you know, aura, life, meditation and so on. Then we meditate for 30 minutes uh, every Sunday. Um, and then after that, we open up for Q&As because we recognize that a lot of these progress is related to the questions that are blocking. And we get so many questions related to thoughts, related to how to incorporate and there are tips and uh, suggestions coming from everyone. Um, so even though we are volunteers, we also learn and grow through this together. And it's a great collective. So uh, yes, of course, you will get opportunity. And if for any reason you're not able to join the Sunday meeting, you are welcome to ask questions in the WhatsApp. And that's the reason why uh, it's not like an app, you're together. So you anytime a question comes, you can ask and then the volunteers will get back to you within, you know, uh, 24 to uh, 24 hours or so, unless it's super urgent because, you know, everybody is working throughout the day, but we get back to you and answer that question um, if it can be answered on the WhatsApp. If it is too long a discussion, we encourage you to ask in Sunday meeting. So hope that answers the question five. Now, as you develop your meditation practice, are you able to see auras? 
So I'll let Colin answer that question as he talked about auras. Colin, you want to take that? Yeah. So interesting is what part of you actually wants to see auras? Um, my experience is this when it comes to seeing auras and experiences is everybody comes to this life with different spiritual gifts. I would suggest just meditating. And if you're meant to see auras, you will see auras. If you are not meant to see auras, you won't see auras. So I don't actually, I've been meditating for a long time. Um, I have had a few opportunities to see beautiful auras, but the act of meditation is to just let go of all expectations and whatever is meant to happen will happen. And if you are truly meant to see auras, you will. And if not, that's okay too. Um, that doesn't mean that you're meditating incorrectly. It doesn't, there's nothing wrong with it. The goal is just to meditate and let go of all expectations, which is really hard. Yeah, I, I hope that answered that, your that's question. A, that's a good one, Colin. I'll quickly add on to that. You know, as we said, aura is really energy. And you can feel the energy, uh, you know, of a place, of a person, and you can experience how that energy interacts with your own energy. So, you know, when you have someone come to you and say, you know what, I really feel calm in your presence, or I re really feel at peace when I'm talking to you. That's the subtle exchange of energy that is happening, the certain interaction of energies that is happening. And that's how, you know, through meditation, the energy and the aura and the bioelectromagnetic field around us starts to get strengthened uh, stronger and stronger. And that's how you can become better sensitive, better aware to feel that energy. Thank you for answering that, Colin and Rahul. Um, next is thank you for initiating and inviting me to this program. I used to practice meditation regularly. Life happened and unfortunately I got away engaging in this program has been reinvigorated my interest. And now I'm thinking how I can incorporate it into my life from Scott. So Scott, definitely welcome you on this journey that we can take together for 45 plus days. Um, it will be great for us to, you know, uh, meditate together. So what time of the day you offer the meditation session on WhatsApp? I'm on East Zone. So just like I answered before, Raji, that um, the reminder one that we send happens at 9 p.m. Eastern time, but there are other times that you can join as well. Like there is a morning time if that works better for you and all that information will be sent on the on the group. And uh, yeah, so that's for the daily. Will there be a stage where all thoughts sublime during meditation after this 45 day immersion program? Again, I'm gonna let uh, Rahul or um, Colin, you want to take that one? Yeah, I think that's a great uh, uh, state to be in where our thoughts have really become uh, very peaceful and uh, you know our mind is not crowded by thoughts. And I think that's a journey. That's a continuous uh, journey. I can say from my personal experience that there are days when I feel like that when I'm in meditation or even outside of meditation during my day as I'm going about it, where I'm much more aware of my thoughts, where I'm much more, uh, you know, better understanding how I'm feeling in certain situations, right? And then there are days like any other day where, uh, you know, I'm in back-to-back -back meetings and things like that, right, where there's not even time to think. Uh, but I think, you know, what my experience has been and others can add, which is, you know, as we go through our practice, uh, making it daily and consistent and building that skill of meditation and regulating our thoughts and emotions, that's where we start to experience a gap between we having a thought and how we choose to respond to it, right? And that gap is where we grow and we gain that strength to regulate our thoughts and emotions. And I think that's how I'm looking at it as my personal journey. And it's a continuous, you know, uh, process of building that skill. And, you know, just like we go to the gym and lift weights and build our endurance, it's uh, just continuously being with that practice and building that skill. 
But yes, I mean, that is where, when we talk about our thoughts becoming sublime, becoming, you know, self-realizing that inner wisdom inside us and being able to listen to that wisdom, that's, um, that's the way that we want to think about how we go through uh, our practice and building that skill. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, and just to add to that, I think that, uh, you know, the 45 days, as Pri has said before, it's like your experimentation, but not everything that, uh, you know, we uh, we hope uh, as part of this journey is going to happen in those 45 days, right? You will start getting some, um, for me personally, in the 45 days, it was just the feel good. Uh, that that's that's all that happened to me in the 45 days. I didn't have many, very many body experiences. Like some people say, I could feel energy tingling. I could feel the energy moving and so on. Or my thoughts became all calm. So that's why we call immersion. With 45 days is you'll get the taste of it. You'll get the experience of it. But not necessarily that, you know, after 45 days, there's a promise or an expectation that, suddenly we, we will go thought free. It's again, as Rahul said, it's going to be a journey and each one on their own path. Like for some people, it will come sooner. For others, it would be different. And then it is also come and go. We experienced that in our spiritual journey at Colin said that for a while, he got all these experiences and then suddenly there was nothing and he started to wonder. That is because we are going through our own journeys of uh, cleansing and charging and life is happening our experiencing are coming through and every step of the way we learn something new we discover something new the one thing that you know oh, I would almost say all of us who have been through this at least for some years can say is that that journey is progressive where we started from and where we are that feeling of harmony that feeling of peace that feeling of inner connection that feeling of also the thoughts uh, and awareness of that, all that continues to grow, uh, but it, it doesn't have a time set and it's unique for every person. I just want to really, really quickly add a sentence onto that. Um, one thing that I can say comes from the 45 days, um, speaking from personal experience, I think what happens is the thoughts kind of, you kind of learn how to like, see the thoughts you kind of learn how to like look into the thoughts and not like take the thoughts like you learn to like take them with a grain of salt and not like take them and like like think that like some sometimes like we're having a really bad day and we have a thought and like we think it's like conquering our life and with like meditation it helps you attain slowly and gradually obviously that that level of peace to where like the thoughts like they like even if they do come to your mind it's not taking over your life or taking over your day. It's kind of just like there and then it slowly disappears. So you like learn how to look into the thoughts and kind of accept what's like going on. Good ad, Brie. So these, are all, these are all great questions. Beautiful Thanks questions. for sharing them. Yeah. So I think that's it for now. And then let me bring back real quick our... Uh, So we are all here to answer your questions and see, we look forward to seeing you in immersion program. Rahul, you can take it from here. Yeah, once again, thanks so much for joining. Uh, it was really nice that you could take the time to be with us today. Uh, once again, here's the QR code. Uh, you can scan it from your phone or we've got the link to the join the immersion program in the chat in Zoom as well. Uh, feel free to uh, you know send a message, call me, or uh, send an email to our uh, connect at summerpandmeditationusa.org. Uh, and we hope that uh, this was very helpful uh, for you to learn more about Samarpan Meditation. And we look forward to joining as many of you as possible in the immersion program. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for joining. I hope you had a good session.